In this problem, we are asked to approximate the area of the surface obtained by revolving the curve y equals ln of x about the y-axis with x varying from 1 to 9 using the midpoint rule with four evenly spaced subintervals. But before we go about attacking this problem, let's just make a quick diagram to make sure we know exactly what we're doing here. So if we plot y equals the natural log of x with x from 1 to 9, this is the basic idea of the curve that we get. I'm not much of an artist. And we're going to revolve it around the y-axis. So the figure we get is going to look something like this. And we want to divide this up into four evenly spaced subintervals. So we know that the partitions are going to be 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. And since we're using the midpoint rule, the midpoints that we care about are 2, 4, 6, and 8. It's also worth noting that in this delta x, the width of the interval is just going to be 2. We'll need that later. So what exactly is the integral that we're trying to approximate? Well, we know that's going from 1 to 9. 2 pi times the radius of the revolution, which in this case is just going to be x, times ds, which in this case is 1 plus dy dx squared, square root of all that, times dx. And since the curve is the natural log of x, you should recognize that in this case, dy dx is just going to be 1 over x. And we can simplify this a little bit further. We break this out. Quantity 1 over x squared is just 1 over x squared. All right, so that's what we're trying to approximate. Let's take this integrand, and we'll just call it r of x for revolution, just so we have something to refer back to. So, in order to approximate this using the midpoint rule, we know that delta x is 2. So we know that this integral is going to be well approximated by delta x times r of each of the midpoints. So r of 2 plus r of 4 plus r of 6 plus r of 8. We know that delta x here is 2. So now we just need to plug in each of these values into r of x and see what we get. And they are not going to be pretty, but that's just something we're going to have to deal with. So 2 pi times x, we get 4 pi over 1 plus x squared, 1 fourth. So we can simplify this a little bit by adding 1 to 1 fourth, and you get 5 fourths. And then we can pull out the 4 on the bottom. The square root of 1 fourth is one half times square root of five. And then these two just cancel to become two pi. And we'll find that as we go along, all of our evaluations are going to look something like this. We'll continue to simplify in the same way. So now let's try to find r of four. 2 pi times 4, that's just 8 pi, times 1 plus 
1 over 16. Then we can simplify this. Adding 1 to 1 16th, you get 17 16th. And once again, we can pull this out, the 1 16th. It becomes 1 4th. So we are left with 2 pi times the square root of 17. So I'll let you evaluate the others on your own, but you do need to know that r of 6 is 2 pi times square root of 37, which is a lovely number. And r of 8 is equal to 2 pi times square root of 65. Another wonderful number. So now we have r2, r4, r6, r8. We can plug those into the formula that we have there and see what we get. It's 2 times 2 pi root 5 plus 2 pi root 17 plus 2 pi root 37 plus 2 pi running out of room 65. Oops. And you can just imagine there's a parenthesis there. And we can pull out a 2 pi from each of these terms. It's not going to make it any prettier. But so we get 4 pi times root 5 plus root 17 plus root 37 plus root 65. If you don't have a calculator handy, that's probably going to be your final answer. But if you do, you should find this is approximately equal to 257.66. That's going to be our final answer.